I'm Lynette Zhang, Chief Market Analyst here at ITM Trading, a full-service physical gold and silver dealer, really specializing in custom strategies. And let me tell you, the powers that be have a plan. I'm thinking you need to have a plan too. We're going to go right to the questions, and this first one is from JD. I heard that the IMF want banks to use my browser search history to determine my credit score. Is this true? Are they already doing this? Well, I haven't read a specific report on it from the IMF as yet, but let us face it, China has been working with that and, and using your internet life, your online life, to determine credit scores for a long time. Also, who you connect with on social media platforms. So, and you know, and I, I have to say that I think that it's a test to get us used to it and also to see how well that it works. And I do know that, of course, we are inside the surveillance economy, something that we've actually talked about quite a bit especially as it's been evolving. So while I don't know that they are already doing this to judge your credit score, I can definitely say that I think it will be something that we can expect to see in the future. Because remember, as we reset the current system into the new system, one of the things that I haven't been able to determine fully yet was what they're going to use to make or create new money. Remember, in the current system, they use debt. So you go in and you borrow to spend, and that's how new money is created in the system is debt. But in the new system, is it still going to be debt? Maybe. It could be transactions. I've read a lot where they're talking about having transactions. So you go online and you buy something or you go into a store and you use your credit card or debit card. If we don't have cash, then, you know, it's easy to track what it is that you're doing. And all of that could be used to create new money in the system and also to determine your credit score. Are you paying for it outright with whatever money you have, are you doing it on credit, etc. So uh, I, in China, they're already doing this. I don't think that this is quite how they're doing it yet, but I think we've all seen the TV commercials where, you know, they say, yes, we want to do business with you, but oh, wow, we found this about you online. Can you explain it? That's, that's, I've seen that commercial a lot. So they're already using your online life to determine, and that this is something that's really important for the younger generation to know. You should not be putting anything online that you that is not okay if it's there forever, because once it is, it's there forever, and you will forever be judged against it. So you need to be careful about that. And this is from Keeley, one of the consultants, and Edwin G asks. I would like to know when to determine at what price is the best to purchase, what company I can trust for the purchase of precious metals. Okay, well, I have to tell you, Edwin, uh, the best price is anywhere below its true fundamental value. And the fundamental value of any asset or any instrument is based upon its most important function and then how history has valued that function. So uh, right now, I haven't really done this calculation in a while, but it's somewhere no north of 12,000 bucks for an ounce of gold. So therefore, at 1866 or 1900, wherever it happens to be at this moment in time, this is the time to be buying it. Because what you're really looking at is the spot market. That's a contract. And we know the physical market is drying up. Wall Street just wants to keep you in contracts. And, you know, what company can I trust for the purchase of precious metals? 
Well, I can tell you, ITM's been around since 1995. I personally have been there since 2002. But everybody that's been there has really been, well, almost everybody, not 100%. But almost everybody that's been there has been there for a very, very long time. And I think that speaks volumes. Additionally, we go through a lot of work because for us, education is the key. So we're not just trying to go, okay, do this, good luck to you. This for us is a lifetime commitment to be with you through this trend and even afterwards. So I personally buy my precious metals from ITM and I know how trustworthy and good they are. And look at all of this work and tell me who else has a strategy because frankly, who else has me? You know, I'm not really tooting my own horn, although my mom said, if it's true, you can say it. I've been in these markets on some level since I was 10 years old. So for the last 56 years, I've been a banker, I've been a stockbroker, and I've developed a strategy. I've studied currencies since 87. Find another firm that has those kind of credentials plus a plan that's actually based on repeatable patterns that we share with you. I don't know if you've seen the Wealth Shield yet. It's a really comprehensive piece. It's got 12 different segments in it. But lest you think that that's too complicated, Keely understands the strategy and she can walk you through it. We want you to understand it. Yes, it takes more time and more effort to educate our clients, but we love educated clients. You get to hold everybody's toes to the fire, including ours. So I think, I think ITM is where you should be buying it, but you do whatever you're comfortable with. And uh, from DC Girl, since Tesla, okay, since Tesla recorded profits all four quarters, would you consider this a good time to buy Tesla stock? The answer would be no. Uh, if you want to do some speculation, you certainly can because they're like Teflon. Uh, but for profitable quarters and the multiples, the price earnings multiples on Tesla is ridiculous. They've just been added to the, I think it's the S&P index, one of the indexes. And so that means a whole bunch of, bunch of institutions have to pile into the stock but you do whatever you want. I don't own any Tesla, nor am I planning on buying any Tesla because, um, yeah, they're severely overvalued. Now, that may not hold true in the future. Plus, they don't pay a dividend either. So you're risking all principle for what's the return, right? Just that the greater fool theory, somebody will go in and be willing to pay even more than you're willing to pay, to me, that's very risky. Having said that, if you're a speculator, as long as you have a truly diversified portfolio, and by that I mean, okay, if you have some stocks over here, you need to have some physical gold outside of the system to offset those losses for when they go to zero. Now, I'm not necessarily saying that the stock goes to zero. What I am saying is that the currency that you can convert that stock into is going to zero. It's only barely more than three cents officially. And it's only holding together because of confidence, public confidence that the dollar can never go away. That's why the Fed and the Fed now accounts named the new digital currency, the digital dollar. So, you know, I think you really need to think about that. I'm not buying Tesla stock, but then again, I am not a speculator. I am a long-term strategist. I don't want to stay up at nights. I don't want to have to worry about it. So I just do what I 100% know is going to help and benefit me in the long term because I'm executing the strategy and trading is a part of that strategy. And uh, Vaughn asks, isn't the economy becoming more unstable each day as more money is printed and debt is getting bigger? Yes, 
it is getting more and more unstable with these stock markets at nosebleed levels. And that's primarily because the Federal Reserve has said, okay, we've got your back. We're just going to keep printing money. And the more they do, the less stable it becomes because of all of that debt and leverage. We've just been going through that in the financial stability report. So Vaughn, a hundred percent. Yes, it's extremely unstable. For the Federal Reserve to come out and say that banks cannot even withstand even a modest shock tells you how unstable it is. But don't worry, because they just allowed JP Morgan Chase and, and Goldman Sachs and these guys to buy back stock and send out a dividend again. Woohoo! I guess they don't read their own financial stability reports. And uh, then the next question, which I think is also from Vaughn, asks, will the stimulus deal be likely to promote economic growth in the new year. The stimulus deal, uh, especially the money that is given directly to uh, consumers, will give it an appearance of economic growth. But I want you to think about this. If you take on a lot of debt and you go out and you buy a big fancy car, a big fancy house, and it's all on debt, and you do not have the funding to pay off that debt, then you might look wealthy, but if your income falls to a certain level, you're gonna have a very hard time paying that debt and you may end up in bankruptcy. Well, governments, it doesn't matter whether you're a government, a corporation, or an individual, ultimately, it all works the same. The difference between you know, an individual in a government or a central bank is that they have the ability uh, to use the printing press. But every time they do, the purchasing power value, the real value of the currency declines. So it will not be promoting economic growth because it will be done on the back of massive additional debt, even though it can look like it if people go out and shop. And they probably will. But ultimately, I still think we're going to see a UBI, universal basic income, soon. They're going to have to do it soon because things are not really getting better. You've still got, you know, countries that are shutting down, borders that are shutting down, and a whole lot of zombie corporations that cannot pay their debt. You've got coming up a wave of evictions and a wave of probably mortgage bankruptcies. No, I don't think the economy is getting better at all. I think it's getting worse. So, okay, I wanted to just do one more little reminder. I don't know if there's enough time for you to take advantage of it or not, but the CARES Act eliminated that 10% early withdrawal penalty if you're under the age of 59 and a half and you want to withdraw up to $100,000. And then it also allows you to spread out the tax ramifications, or the tax liability, over three years. That window of opportunity closes the end of this year. So you may be out of time already, but I just wanted to keep you in the loop. And it is the holiday season, but still you've got to remember, it is time to cover your assets. And here at ITM Trading, we do that with the Wealth Shield. And the foundation of the Wealth Shield is real money, physical gold, and physical silver. So regardless of what time of year it is, you need to get it done. 2021 looks to be an extraordinarily interesting year and not necessarily in the best way. We'll see what happens once these evictions start to roll through the economy. But if you have any questions about this or anything else, just send them into questions at itmtrading.com. Make sure as well that you visit our blog. That's where I write my blog posts, but also where you'll be able to find all of the images that you can print out if you want to, and certainly all of the links to, the, to all my research materials. So you can do your own due diligence. 
Don't take anybody's word for anything. That's why we're the best, in my opinion, the best place to do business with because we're going to give you all the tools you need to hold our toes to the fire. That's as it should be. We work for you. If you become our client, we are a big family, but frankly, we work for you. So if you like this, please give us a thumbs up. Make sure that you subscribe, hit that little bell. And until next we meet, please have a very safe holiday season, happy, healthy. And you know, if you see or you know of somebody else in need and you have the ability to help in any way, please do that. It's all part of the community. Till next time, please be safe out there. Bye-bye.